So, my name is Jam and I'm a front-end developer for Shell. And I'm going to talk about accessibility tonight. And you may be thinking that I'm talking about this topic because I know a lot about it, but actually I don't. Um, and it's just very recently that I've been tasked to um, make sure that a website that we are launching is accessible. And this is when I realized that um, I don't know much about it. I thought I did, like all text counts, doesn't it? Um, but yeah, uh, it's not until you actually look into it that you realize that you may be doing something that's um, not correct or that you, there is more that you can do for it. So there's a lot of um, definitions of web accessibility, but it all just means uh, making websites usable for everyone. And uh, there are standards in place for this, and that's what WCAG is about. There's um, 13 guidelines that under WCAG, and they're um, basically all boils down to being perceivable, operable, understandable, and robust. And there's one quick check that you can actually do right away um, without any setup or downloading anything. Um, and in terms of operability, you can use your keyboard. So you can navigate your page with just using a keyboard. And this will already take you um, a long way in terms of accessibility because this uh, brings out um, uh, interactive elements on your app that you can't get through by just using a, a keyboard. And when you can't get into a feature, it becomes useless. But to do this check, you have to make sure that you can see where you are on the page first. And that's why uh, focus rings are very important. And a lot of people would want this removed for aesthetic reasons. But I urge you not to do that. And if you really hate the blue ring, you could at least change it or replace it with something that um, suits more for your branding. Um, if you do put an alternative um, style to it, please make sure that it's very obvious and um, it really stands out because you may have users that have um, low vision or have color blindness, which leads us to our next point. Uh, ensure sufficient color contrast. And this goes under the perceivable um, bucket in the WACA guidelines. Color blindness is actually very common. It affects about one in 12 men. So we have to make sure that our websites can be seen by um, a lot more of our users. But when you have normal vision, it's actually hard to check this by just um, our, our eyes because we don't see like what they see. So I'll leave this slide for now and we'll come back to it when I get to the slide about um, tools. So alt text, everyone's favorite. Um, I think if everyone, if someone asks you about an accessibility feature that you could do, this is probably the first thing that you'll think about. But it's actually also um, easy to get wrong. So I'll show you first what happens if you don't um, give an alt text or an alt attribute. So in this example, um, if the image has this file name, it will read it out, and it will read it out every, per character, and you can just imagine how annoying that's gonna be. So what does that mean? Do we put an alt text on every image? That's not the case as well. So in this example, um, so there's in an icon and then a text next to it. In this case, the icon doesn't give any more meaning. It doesn't really add to it because there's already a text that serves as the label for that link. So I'll show you what happens if you overdo it. Link, magnifying glass search, link, speech bubble contact, link, padlock login. So if it's just decorative, um, you don't have to make the screen reader read it out. So what you can do is ignore images that are just for pure decoration with adding an alt attribute with an empty string. And link, make, home, okay. link, search, link, contact, link, login. So it sounds so much better, it's more direct. And um, 
the alt text doesn't actually uh, clutter or like just provide any more noise. So just remember that an empty alt text is different from not giving an alt attribute at all. And if you're still confused, W3C has come up with an alt decision tree. And um, I've provided the link on my um, Twitter account because I don't know how else to share it that everyone could just access. So there's um, a hashtag, uh, JS Roundabout A11Y. So you could just like visit it there. Use semantic HTML. Um, it's really hard to talk about accessibility without talking about semantic HTML because it's so core to it. When you say semantic, it just means um, meaning. And in the context of the web, it's conveying the meaning of the page content. There's two points that perfectly sum this up. The first one is to use elements according to their intended purpose. When you use an element for the intended purpose, all the behaviors are already built in. You don't have to add any more, or you don't have to worry about um, adding focus or keyboard interactions by using JavaScript. So if you're building a button, use a native button. And I know it's very easy to just reach for a div because it's so uh, generic and it's like a blank canvas. But um, divs have no semantic meaning. If a screen reader comes across a div, it doesn't um, know what it's about. So I'll give you an example of a button that's made with a div. So it's, a tab index has been put in to make sure that it's focusable. But when a screen reader gets to this element, it will read it as download group instead of the native download button. So what does group actually mean? Like when you hear that, does that sound interactive to you? You don't even know what uh, that's about. So you could just imagine if this is your call to action, um, a screen reader user may get confused and just miss it and, um, because they, it doesn't sound like something that they can um, click. The other point on semantic HTML is the separation of content and presentation. And so don't use an element because of the style that it gives you. A very common example of this is using an H1 because you want a big text. Um, don't do that because headings are actually more important than you think. So there was a study in 2017 by WebAIM and they asked screen reader users, how, how do you find an information on a page that you haven't been to before? And 70%, almost 70% 70 of them said that they use the, the headings to find um, that information on that page. And this is very similar to what a sighted user would do. So um, you'd look at a page, scan it for big text or bold text, and these texts would give you an idea of like what the contents of that section has. So, um, so it's important to um, make sure that your headings are uh, used correctly. And while screen reader users can't see the size like um, normal, normal uh, like sighted users can, you can convey the same hierarchy by using the correct H tags. And don't skip levels because it paints a picture of what the page structure is about. Headings can allow assistive technologies to quickly navigate the page as shown by that survey. And I'll give you an example of how to do that in VoiceOver. Why are we authoring practices 1.1 web content? Headings menu. Heading level 1, 2 items. Authoring practices 1.1. Heading level 2, 3 items. Working group note. Heading level 2, abstract. You are currently in a VoiceOver menu. This is a level 2 headings menu. Level 3 headings menu. So when you hit command option U on VoiceOver, you'll pull up a set of shortcuts. And these are categorized into groups, and one of them is headings. So you can browse by heading levels as well, like um, level one, level two, level three. And this corresponds to the H tag that you've used. So now we've spoken a lot about uh, semantic HTML and using native elements when you can. 
But what if you need something, you need to build an element that's custom and it doesn't exist um, with the native elements? That's what, where ARIA comes in. ARIA gives you the ability to enhance or modify the semantic meaning of elements. But there's one very important thing to remember with ARIA. ARIA does not modify behavior. All it does is tell the screen reader that, um, so this is what uh, I want you to say, but it doesn't give you the, um, the other functionalities or behavior of that element. So I was watching this video, how a screen reader user surfs the web. And um, I, I, when I'm using a screen reader, I don't know what I'm doing, actually. I'm just like tabbing, maybe like using the up and down button. But if you're not a real screen reader user, you don't use this every day, you don't really know how um, a user would use it. So this, um, this video gives you a good insight on how a real user actually navigates the web with just a screen reader. And in that video, she mentioned that when ARIA is used well, it's great. But when it's used poorly, it actually makes it worse, worse than not having it at all. So the coding principle, keep it simple, is actually um, quite applicable in accessibility. So an ARIA role defines what an element is supposed to be to a screen reader. If you remember the fake button that we had earlier, if you put a role of button in there, when a screen reader gets to this element, it will read out download button. But you have to remember that that's all it does. You have to still uh, provide all the focus and um, keyword interactions. But like, well, how do you know what um, those actually are? So there's a um, ARIA authoring practices guide, which um, tells you all that you have to know about a, an <coughs> element. And if you're building a custom element, there's um, a lot of different uh, examples of widgets here that probably um, meets what you're trying to build anyway. So don't reinvent the wheel. There are ways to do it, and it already states how um, to build it and what behaviors are expected. Provide labels to interactive elements. And there's a few ways to label an element. The first one is probably something that you're already familiar with, but it only is really intended for a specific number of elements that are listed here. What if something that you want to, um, to label is not part of these ones? That's where ARIA label can be used. It can be used on any element, and it overrides the, um, the native labeling mechanism. So in this example, the link already has the text of share. Without ARIA label, it will just say link share. But because we put an ARIA label in there, it overrides it, and you can put a more descriptive uh, like text in there. And that's what the screen reader would read for you. The other one is ARIA labeled by. So uh, like the ARIA label, you can use it on any element. But the main difference here is you're pointing to another element to become the label. It's like saying, whatever this element is saying, that's going to be my label. And it overrides native labeling and um, ARIA label, so it trumps everything. Use audit tools to help check your site. There's a lot of things to consider, and we're, th those basically just scratch the surface. It's really hard to remember it all, and if you look at the WCAG guidelines, it's very dry. <laughs> I don't think anyone would look at it and be like, yes, I'm ready to read this all. But um, that's what all the tools are good for. They um, give you a quick way to check against these guidelines and standards, um, and it gives you back a nice report. The first tool that we're going to talk about is WAVE by WebAIM. So this is a uh, Chrome extension. So how to use it is, uh, apart from downloading it, is when um, you are on the page that you want to check, you click the, um, the icon on Chrome, and it puts out this um, like side 
a panel and it tells you what the errors are. Uh, it also appends some icons on the page. What I like about this is that it's visual and you can tell just by a quick look where, which parts of the page actually has a lot of errors. Um, but it can also be a downside as well. Because when there's a lot going on, it can be quite hectic and you, it's really hard to like, see what the errors are. So what I, what I do is I combine this with another tool for um, checking accessibility. So the other tool that I use is Axe by DQ. It's also a Chrome extension tool. And I, try, I wanted to test it on linkscars.com. And this is how you use it. So you open the um, Chrome Dev Tools, and it's under Axe. And you just um, click the Analyze button. And it will give you back a, a nice um, report. Funnily enough, the um, errors for links cars is about color contrast. So just coming back to color contrast, automatic, um, automated tests are really good for this because WCAG would give you some uh, guidelines of what the correct color contrast is. And with a naked eye, there's no way to tell what three to one ratio is. I, I wouldn't know how to do that. So when it comes to color contrast, I leave it to um, automated tools to do that for me. Last but not least is Lighthouse by Chrome. So it's also a Chrome extension um, and you open up pretty much the same way. It's under the Audits tab and it's actually part of a bigger suite. Um, you could also test performance and SEO <coughs> with Lighthouse and not just accessibility. It gives you back this nice report, and it gives you an overall score on the top right corner. It's running Axe under the hood, so you may get responses that are quite similar to what Axe would give you. But my favorite part of this is actually the um, additional items to manually check. I really like this part because it reminds you that you still need a human to properly audit a site and test a product that another human would use. So passing an automated audit doesn't mean that your website is fully accessible. At the end of the day, audit tools are just checking code. And I urge everyone to at least try the keyboard test or um, listen to a screen reader. Because it's the only time for me that I actually realized that my work matters and how you write code really affects how other people can use it. When you experience it yourself, how unusable an app could be or get the frustration of um, trying to do a simple task and not being able to, you um, realize the impact that you have on users that only have this as an option. Um, and this is the only way they can navigate the web. There's a lot to learn about accessibility, uh, but you have these tools to help you out. And it doesn't, uh, don't get uh, intimidated when you get a lot of errors, because if it's the first time that you will do an audit, you will get a lot, but you don't have to do it all in one go anyway. Um, do it step by step, and each step that you take for accessibility will be important for someone and some of your users. So uh, that's it for my talk. Um, the links are posted with this hashtag and on my uh, Twitter. And Shell is also hiring. So if you email me at jam.crench at s19.tech, um, I can hook you up and tell you more about what exciting things we're working on here at Shell. So thank you very much. Thank you.